Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, WIT Simulator webinar. Uh, my name is Ken Miller. I'll be your host for today. Uh, today, we're going to go over kind of some of the basics of WIT, so we have uh, some fundamentals in place, and then we'll go over a quick demo of using the WIT Simulator to develop uh, WIT-based applications. Um, <clears throat> so, let's just dive into it. A little bit about me, your host. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Erdos Miller. We've been around for about a little over 10 years now. Uh, I am an NWD and drilling technology nerd. Um, uh, it's my calling in life. Uh, you know, it was a really big discovery for me when I figured out how much I liked this kind of technology and how much I enjoyed working on it. And, you know, we spent the last, you know, 12, 13 years building NWD systems, automatic drillers, EDRs, mud logging systems, pretty much anything on the rig with a processor we have been involved with at some point. Um, my path to getting here uh, has been, uh, I started off as a software developer. Uh, started off my first uh, job writing uh, LabVIEW code for Texas Instruments, and then I got into writing uh, LabVIEW code for measurement while drilling systems. And then I became a project manager and managed teams building technology. And then I started my own company, became an entrepreneur. Uh, I, you know, if you can see the guitar behind me, I uh, still have uh, uh, some dreams of being a rock star at some point. Maybe after we make a lot of money building uh, tools, I'll, uh, you know, go off and, and, and pursue that lifelong dream. Also a lifelong Star Trek fan. You can see the uh, Star Trek poster back behind me uh, next to the guitar. Uh, and I believe in challenging the status quo. I am never really satisfied with the state of things. Uh, you know, once we, once we build something that changes the world, we're gonna change it again. And we're never really quite satisfied with where the world's at. So always trying to push stuff forward. So it's kind of ironic that we're gonna jump into talking about really old technology today. Um, so, uh, so let's talk about WITS. So WITS, WITS is a really fundamental technology for drilling. Uh, it is everywhere. It's on every rig. Uh, we would not be, you know, it is a, it's a linchpin of drilling today. We would not be drilling without it. Um, however, it is a very old technology. Uh, it, it has origins all the way back to the 80s. Um, and its main purpose is just for, you know, simple machine-to-machine -machine data exchange. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you want to send your colleague some data, you send him an email, right? So that's human to human data exchange. Uh, in this case, if you look at the little uh, block diagram on the right here, we have an NWD system. Uh, this would be a system that's on the rig site uh, and measuring uh, the path of the borehole. And we have an EDR system, and this would be a system that's measuring the operation of the rig. Uh, these two systems want to exchange data. And so the NWD system wants to send NWD and LWD data to the EDR system, and the EDR system wants to send rig sensor data back to the NWD system. And this is done on a regular basis using the WITS protocol, um, and that is what I mean by machine-to-machine -machine communication. Um, so it uses a simple uh, kind of text, human-readable text protocol. Um, I've actually copied and pasted a uh, packet here in the middle. You can see the packet has a start that starts with two ampersands, and an end that ends with two exclamation points, and in between is data items. And so each line represents a data item, and so there's roughly 20-ish you know, data items in this packet, and these packets are usually sent um, once or twice a second, uh, sometimes as slow as two seconds. So WITS today still uses a, a serial cable, that's the most popular method of doing it, so an old school DB9 you know, serial cable like you had on the back of your computer in the 90s, uh, it provides for simple, bi-directional, real-time data exchange from one system to the other. Uh, and even though it's super old, it has not been replaced. So it is, it is somehow <laughs> still critical for oil and gas drilling. Uh, and beyond that, it's actually growing in, in usage and adoption, right? Um, we are all working very hard to um, build an automated oil field um, to reduce the cost of drilling shale wells and be more efficient and do our jobs better. Um, and so this is necessitating and pushing forward a lot more digital systems. And, and we have the more digital systems, whether or not they're monitoring or control on the rig site, uh, the, more, um, the more data interchange we have. And right now, WITS is what we use. Um, so just to break down the packet a little bit further. Um, so if I look at this little line here, 0108, it says a value of 10,350, right? So what is, what is that, 0108, right? Well, WITS, WITS has records, right? And so to decode this, I'm gonna look at the first two numbers first and say, okay, that's the general time-based number, 01, right? So that's this table. So first you have tables of these record types and the tables are collections of similar or like data points, right? So time-based data, depth-based data, connection data, hydraulic, 
tripping time, tripping connections, survey directional, formation evaluation, mechanical, pressure evaluation. So, you know, each one of these categories might have 20 or 30 or more data items that are in, are in it, right? So this first two numbers tells us to go to table one, okay, 01. And the next two numbers, now we look at the 08, right? And so if I look at uh, this one, I'm, on that, I'm now in the 01 table, and the eighth data item here is the depth of the bit, right? Measured depth of the bit, right? So it's usually gonna be sent as a floating point number. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, 10,350.00, that's a floating point number. Length is four. Uh, no, it's longer. Well, that kind of shows a problem. Metric Unix, it'll be in meters, otherwise it'll be in feet, right? So, um, so if I kind of decode this packet by hand, you know, this is, this is a, one system sending to the other saying, hey, the current depth of the rig is 10,350 feet, right? Um, and so if you just back up and look at this packet, this packet contains a lot of other information, but at this moment when it's sending the data, uh, it's 10,350 feet. Now, WITS is a, a real-time only protocol, meaning that it has, no, it has no ability to tell you what happened yesterday. It can only tell you what's happening right now, right this second, okay? Um, which is fine, because it's meant for real-time interchange. That's its job, right? Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, if, you know, you, you could have one system, you know, in this case, the EDR system would be sending the depth to the NVD system once a second and updating it as to what the current depth of the rig is. Now, <clears throat> I would be remiss in teaching you a little bit about WITS if I didn't teach you a little bit about also WITSML, because they have really similar, similar names. And, you know, a uh, natural question is, if you know what WITS is, what's WITSML, right? So WITSML is a, a newer technology. Um, it has, uh, it's based on an XML schema instead of kind of like textual, uh, human readable data. It's still human readable, but it's much more complicated. Um, it, uh, uses a network protocol from the beginning. So no serial cables. It goes over the internet. It goes over your company's network. Um, and it is critical for company to company data exchange, right? So WITS is covering the rig site and, and doing data exchange at the rig site. And then once that data gets off the rig site and it's in the cloud, um, you know, it's WITSML is being used for, you know, sending that data from company to company. And it's also growing in usage. Um, and so I made this little diagram here of a, kind of a typical uh, application in the industry. So, um, you know, rig site, we might have uh, the NMBD and the EDR system talking to each other. In this case, you know, it's one of our MicroPulse NMBD systems. And then we typically talk to a PaySon EDR system. This is a very common application, right? And once again, we're sending NMBD data uh, to the EDR system live, and that allows the EDR system to uh, show the NMBD data on all of its screens around the rig site. And then it's sending us back uh, all the rig parameters, such as like the measure depth, which is really useful for us because then we automatically, when we receive a survey, we ask the rig what its depth, depth is, and then we tag the survey with that depth, right? So the data exchange ends up being very useful, right? Now, the EDR system will then go ahead and send all of its data to the cloud and, and, and store it in what's called the WITSML store, right? And so this is basically a database on the cloud kind of represented by this data center icon. And so once that data is hosted in a WITSML store, then lots of other people can access it, right? So a popular thing today is there's third-party applications. Uh, you know, uh, the guys at Rogi have their solo application. There's the Corva dashboard, which is very popular. Mobilize also has a solution. These solutions um, primarily read the, read the rig data out of the WITSML store, right? And then another thing is company to company exchange. If, you know, Chevron, XTO, the operators wanted to get the data from the rig, they would have their own software or their own programs call into this WITSML store and then transfer it, right? Um, and so this is the two solutions, WITSML and, I'm sorry, WITS0, which is, you know, uh, commonly referred to as just WITS doing the, the data, uh, the data exchange at the rig site, and then WITSML kind of handling the data exchange in the cloud, right? So these guys are partners, right? They're not, you know, WITSML was not meant to and does not replace WITS. Um, they uh, go together. Um, and so WITSML doing the rig site data transfer machine to machine in real time. And then WITSML uh, doing the data center to, you know, cloud uh, data exchange company to company. It's near real time. Uh, you can, it's a, maybe a few seconds delayed so you can get it close to real time, but it is not real time. And then it's really cool because it supports, you know, anybody getting access to the data and then you can write all sorts of apps and you don't have to be at the rig site. You can just get the data from the cloud and do really cool things, right? Um, okay. 
Now, an important thing to note about WITS is that it is really growing in usage, right? And so when I started, you know, over 10 years ago, this is pretty much the standard use case, right? We have an NWD system sending data to the EDR system, and that's about it, right? Um, now, I also started when we still had geolograph cables for depth tracking, so, um, but very simple, right? And, and this point-to-point -point thing worked out, right? But if you look at what's going on on a rig site today, it's getting a lot, a lot more complicated. Um, and so we still have that NWD system sending data to the EDR system. But we also, you know, maybe there's a bit guidance system. And so this would be like Motive or Hawkeye. This is something that's trying to advise the directional drillers and tell them the best, what it thinks is the best way to get back on plan or hit the target or whatever, right? And it needs the NWD data, right? And so it's connected to the NWD system as well. And then the automatic driller over here is a system that can, you know, hold a constant weight of bit or ROP, or it can do auto sliding or whatever else. It needs the WITS information and the rig information as well, right? And then you might have other things like a mud logging or chromatic graphy system that's sending data. You might have a third party data aggregator that's pulling data from the system. And they're, you know, I kind of drew these arrows in a confusing way on purpose to illustrate the point that, you know, when we take a point to point protocol and try and repurpose it for having lots of things talk together, it, it really doesn't make any sense, right? It gets very complicated. Um, and so which is still, which is still that foundation. It's still do, exchanging all this data chain. This, this does work when you set it up, but it is complicated to set up and maintain and it's not quite ideal, right? So um, I added some limitations here. So WITS, you know, has no, no built-in network capabilities. So that means we're running kind of point-to-point -point serial cables everywhere um, and then doing our own networking. Um, and, you know, the fact that it can't really, is, it wasn't really designed to have more than two things exchanging data is kind of a limitation, right? So, you know, one little plug before we get to the WIT simulator is we have uh, developed a program called NetWITS. This is a, a free solution. It's another thing that you can also download. And this, this really fixes those, cap those limitations of WITS, right? So it adds a networking capability so that you can take all of these different systems get them on the network and have them exchange data with NetWits in a clean manner, right? Get rid of the serial cables, you know, uh, have the data all chatted with the network. Um, many of the, no all, many, as many nodes as you want can be simply connected. They all share the same data tables. Uh, they can all exchange their data with each other. You know, if the, the, the uh, automated driller gets on here, he can get the information from the EDR and the NVD system and the bit guidance system and vice versa for every other node, they can access every other node's data. Uh, then it supports multiple uh, uh, data channels, actually, so you could have separation if you wanted to. Um, and that's just a, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, a, a quick solution for some notations on WITS, right? So let's talk about the WITS simulator, right? So the WITS simulator. Okay, is um, Mint is a development tool, right? It's something that you're gonna use when you're developing a custom WITS application, right? So WITS, once again, is a machine-to-machine -machine protocol. And so this isn't gonna be something that you can kind of type and, and chat with the system by hand. You're gonna to have to write some software to do it, right? Um, and so what the WITS simulator allows you to do is in your development environment, um, you can write your code, your system. Uh, in this case, I'm doing NWD and LWD data. Uh, and then test it against the WIT simulator. And the WIT simulator will do two things. One, it will host a uh, WIT server that emulates the behavior of common systems. And it will also pretend to be the rig. So it will give you some pseudo realistic um, data while, we, while it's operating to kind of fake out what might be going on in the rig, right? Now in production, what that allows you to do is when you go to production, you know, and you go to test your system at the rig site and you hook into an EDR system or someone else's WIT system, the WIT simulator hopefully will have it so that you have very little work to do, if any, um, when you go and take your new system out to the rig site and try and run it, uh, and you'll just be ready to go, right? Um, and so, uh, so I'm gonna do a little demo today. Um, so for today's setup, I have a virtual serial port set up on my computer. Uh, COM3 and COM4 are connected like a virtual serial port cable. And so I'm going to send data from my, or sorry, actually read data from the WIT simulator into, into my system, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and hop into that. Okay. So let me close this for a second. All right. So here's the WIT simulator. Um, it's, it's up. It's, let's go ahead and restart it. Okay. So let's start out the WIT simulator. So just double click on the icon. 
here we go. I can pull up my device manager on Windows and, oops, are you guys looking at the wrong screen? Let me just make sure it's on the right screen. Okay. All right, so I have COM3 and COM, uh, COM4 set up. Go ahead and start up the WIT simulator. All right, and so it's gonna start up, it's gonna try and find the serial ports, and then we're gonna use COM3 today, right? And so I pick COM3 and it's gonna host a WIT server on COM3, okay? Now, a couple things to note about WIT simulator is there's got two simulation speeds, it's got quick and it's got real. And so the quick simulation speed will make things kind of happen fast enough to talk about them. A real simulation speed will operate pretty slow, you know, similar to the rig in the real world, right? And so that's a bit more useful if you're trying to test your application over the evening or over a couple days or something like that, right? So I'll leave it on quick for today. And then all you have to do is attach it to a COM port. Uh, we also support TCP, but today for a COM port and then just hit start, right? And we're gonna choose our data source, whether or not it's the simulator or the playback. The simulator will be the kind of pretend rig that pretends the drill, right? And so you can see it's pretending to pick up the block height and then it's gonna turn the pumps on, the standpipe pressure is gonna come up and then it'll kick in the rotary and then it'll go to drilling, right? The playback mode allows you to take an existing WITS file, maybe from a real rig, and then replay that data over time um, and have it uh, uh, available via the WITS server, right? So it ignores the internal simulator and then just plays it back to the server, right? So you can see now um, that uh, it's drilling ahead, the block height's going down, it's going down probably faster than it would actually happen in real time, maybe not, with some of the RP rates that we have today. Uh, and so my bit depth and hole depth is increasing there, right? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and, and set it to like a, a bit depth other than just surface, so I'll just set it to 10,000 feet, right? And so it's gonna re restart that, right? Now that's cool. Um, and then we can come over here and we can see some charts and it shows you kind of the values as it plots them and simulates them. And then if we go to the WITS tab, that allows us to see transmitted data and the received data, right? And so it's transmitting all this data, right? Date, the time, the vendor, who is us, Eros Miller, um, pump stroke rates, block position, all these kind of things. It's not receiving anything back because no one's talking to it right now, but it's transmitting. And so I can display the data in either decoded, which means as a table, or I can display it in raw, which means I can see the raw packet and kind of figure out what's going on with that packet, right? So let's write a little application, right? And I actually uh, wrote a little demo application here to show you guys. Um, my, my software development package of choice is LabVIEW. I've been doing it for a long time. It's a very powerful language, but it is very different than what a lot of you are used to because it's a graphical programming language, right? So I've written a little WITS uh, demo application. Um, and uh, all, all, it, all it does, let's just imagine, I just wanted to write a little application to plot, plot or log the weight on bit on the rig. Like I was really interested in weight on bit for my test. For example, let's say that I was trying to build a new automatic driller or I was trying to build some BHA component that um, you know, really has effects weight on bit quite a bit. Let's say that I wanted to log that for that test, right? Um, and so I'm gonna connect to the simulator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit COM4 here and I'm gonna read weight on bit, right? And so I hit run and this little guy uh, is already reading the weight on bit. Well, the weight on bit's pretty high, it's 14. So I actually have to adjust my dial here to, to show the value so I can do that. All right, there we go, 14. So it connected to the simulator and it's, it's running it. And so if we take a look at the source code here, it's pretty simple. Uh, once again, it's graphical, so it's probably a bit different than a lot of people are used to. But, you know, uh, here we're opening a serial port. This little block here is a while loop. And so, you know, forever until I tell it to stop, it's reading data from the serial port, it's parsing out the widths, and, it, and then it's looking for record one item 16. And so if you, you remember the tables, you know, um, record one is the general time-based data. Item 16 is weight on bit, right? And so I read the data, the data from the port, and then I can um, uh, uh, parse out the weight on bit, and then I plot that on a chart, and then I also put it into a dial, right? And then when I hit stop, it'll close the serial port, and it'll be done, right? And so you can see that it, you know, kind of finished drilling a little pretend stand, and now it's going down again, so the weight on bit came off, and now it's going back up, and that, you know, that looks pretty similar to what happens in the real world. Um, and so <clears throat> now with, you know, I've, I've built this code, I've tested it against the WIT simulator, it, it appears to be working just fine, right? And so um, I would have a lot of confidence that if I, I wanted to take this code out to the rig right now and 
fired up on a laptop and connect into the rig and run it, that it would work just fine. Um, now I can't, we can't promise that the wood simulator will throw you all the curveballs you'll, you'll get in the, in, in the real world. But the WITS simulator is built upon uh, my experience of years of writing WITS code and dealing with the fact that you have to interface to a number of different systems. And if you come over here to WITS, you can put it in server mode or client mode. And then there's a, there's, you can either have it pretend to be like a CAN rig or a TOTCO system or a PASON system. Those are the two different major ways of operating. You can change the frequency to test your code. So I can go ahead and, and, and bump it up to one second and I'll send the data faster, which would also make my plots update faster. Um, and so um, the WIT simulator encapsulates a lot of what you're going to find uh, out in the wild uh, for testing, right? And so for developing your WITS code, right? Um, let's see, let's see, does my, uh, here, does my weight on bit, oh, it's too low, okay. There you go, so my, yeah, shoot. Okay, well, it's too, too zoomed out, but the weight on bit chart there is start, they're starting to look like the one over here, right? So. Um, so this is just a little demo application. Let me let me give you guys a, a, a demo of how we use this internally, right? And so um, so I can start Pulse Touch, and Pulse Touch is our NWD receiver software. Um, and so it's going to fire up here. Just give it a second. And so we can test Pulse Touch internally without being on a rig because we have built in what we call a live pressure playback, right? And that'll take the standpipe data from the rig and play it back to the system and allow us to um, <clears throat> uh, play back the NBD information, right? Now, um, so there we go, pumps up, now here comes the data. All right, so Pulse Touch has it set up to where we can uh, create WITS channels, right? And so um, I can you know, edit the channel, I called it the WITS simulator channel, I connected it to COM4, and you can see that it's looking to bring in depth and RPM, and then we can send out all this different NWD information, right? And so when we're developing Pulse Touch at Erdos Miller internally, we're using the WITS simulator to test our WITS functionality with for the NWD system. So I got it all set up, I hit start, now the data should be coming through. And um, we're gonna start decoding here in a second when the, when the sync signal comes through. But you can also see that I'm, I'm tapped into the rig, right? So. I come over here, you know, RPM zero, we are pumps. Oh, we got pumps up. Let's see here. What's going on? 1054. Uh oh, debug. That's right. Hold it. Is that? Oh, we haven't started to drill down yet. Are we just hanging out? Oh, just hanging out. All right. Well, that's a live demo for you. Let's see if we can get to. Uh, Restart here real quick. Start over. Okay, so start that up again. We're gonna reconnect to COM3, and then, let's see, COM3, okay, we're gonna start drilling again. We're gonna start off at zero, and so if that's working, there we go. We see that, okay, now we're back at zero, zero RPM here, right? So we're decoding that inf NWD information, and then, Let's see here, wits, we can go into view. And so we're sending out these values as we decode information. And then here's the data incoming here from the, uh, the wits simulator, right? And I can see the same thing if I come over here and go to raw wits, I can see, okay, look, here's the transmitted information. We're transmitting these packets from pulse touch to the wits simulator. And then uh, the um, wits simulator is transmitting back all this data over here. Um, and so anyways, so as we're developing Pulse, Pulse Touch internally, we can use this uh, to test our WITS functionality without actually having to be at the rig or deploy the software, right? And so, um, so yeah, that's how we use it internally. So um, thank you, that concludes the demo. Let's, let's go back to the slideshow, we got one more slide. So, um, Okay, so WITS is, WITS is doing its job, right? And we talked about how it's kind of, you know, being uh, extended to do beyond what it was supposed to do because instead of just doing point to point here, we've got a very complicated system set up, right? And so I told you before, I was never satisfied with the status quo. And so this is working today, but it's not an ideal solution. We could do a lot better, right? So um, I would encourage the industry uh, to think about like, what does WITS 2.0 look like? We, we need to have real-time data exchange between you know, five to 10 or more smart 
digital systems made by different vendors at the rig site, right? The number of systems are going up. Um, on top of that, um, <clears throat> we are, there's a couple other things. One, we're trending towards, you know, personless drilling operations where we really don't want anybody on site, right? And so the fact that, you know, WITS has cables and sometimes the cables get unplugged or their old serial ports, it's very difficult to manage that if you don't have someone there, right? Um, and then additionally, you know, we really need a lot higher speed data. So if we think about like what WITS 2.0 looks like, it would have multi-point data exchange, right? You'd be able to have all these systems talk together, no cables whatsoever at the rig site, right? Nothing to set up there. So wireless or something else like that. It should be a plug and play system, right? Uh, it should also be zero configuration. Like you should be able to get there, your equipment's installed on the rig and it just works, right? Uh, it needs to be remote addressable so that somebody can remotely configure the system or troubleshoot it and not have to have a physical person at the rig site. And then we need uh, much higher speed data, right? Um, right now, uh, we're sending data once per second, maybe every once every two seconds. Um, that's gotten us by until now, but there's a lot more value and all of the systems could be operating a lot more effectively if we really increase that data rate, right? So going to 10 Hertz or 50 Hertz, 50 times per second, maybe even upwards of a hundred times per second, you know, modern wireless or wired, uh, you know, ethernet Wi-Fi networks can handle data, data exchange rates at that rate. Uh, really pushing those data rates way up will just open up a new world of applications of drilling system interaction of making the systems better and more efficient, more manless, uh, personless. Um, and so this is literally what the vision that I would start to push for like what WITS 2.0 might look like, right? Uh, it's literally very fast. It's still needs to be very real time. So no databases, just instantaneous exchange, but you know, something like that. Uh, so to close up, we have a lot of free stuff for you guys, um, a lot of free utilities and information. And when I say free, I mean, it's really, really free. It's no money. I'm not kidding you. There's no catch, right? Uh, we've had a bunch of people in the past download the WIT simulator and say, okay, it's nice. I played with the demo. How much does it cost? And we said, it's not, that's not, there's no cost. That's not a demo. That's the full thing. Knock yourself out. Right. Um, and so what we have for you is the WIT simulator, which is what the development tool that I uh, demoed today to test and develop your WITS applications. You can download that. Uh, also, NetWITS is available for free download. This is the uh, software that allows you to transform WITS from a point-to-point -point protocol to a network multi-point protocol uh, today. Uh, we also have our free WAVE uh, drilling data analyzer. This allows you to take a lot of common formats of drilling data and kind of mash them together for analysis or import them. And then uh, for further reading, you know, we now host uh, the original WIT specification on our website. So if you just head to our website, all those data tables, all those references that I uh, talked about, um, you guys can, uh, you know, just check those out, bring them up and uh, use that as your, your kind of source of truth or your reference. So, um, you know, thank you for joining me today. I, I hope this was uh, uh, <clears throat> educational and uh, let's go ahead and move into our Q and A session, right? And I will try to get the chat going so I can I can see stuff, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is networks comparable to PDS as a viewer as well? Blue, I don't I don't know. Maybe email me Ken at erdosmiller.com afterwards, and we'll figure that out. Uh, is if everything is free, how do we make money? Uh, we make money by uh, building custom technology and selling NWD systems. So uh, the, these tools are things that we use internally that we think uh, will just make the industry better if we release them for free. And so that's why we do that. Um, okay, Salman asked, you know, uh, what's the big difference between Wits and Wits ML? So if we back up to this slide here, Salman, um, where is it? Oops. Okay. So WITS, WITS, WITS is at the rig site. It's a simple protocol. It's um, machine to machine, right? And it's just done at the rig site with serial cables, right? WITSML is an internet-based protocol, uses a data schemer. It goes from data center to data center or database to beta database in the cloud. So, and it's, it's not real time, it's near real time. Uh, and then uh, Morales, I, I don't understand your question. You said is available NetWITS. Maybe try saying it again. Uh, how much data can you send via a 9,600 baud rate? Uh, not a lot, right? So um, that 9,600 baud rate, uh, Jim, uh, supports, you know, kind of the one second or two second packets that we have today. Um, you know, since WITS works on a serial port, it's going to be very easy to bump that up to 
115200 baud, but that really points out why we need kind of a WITS 2.0, um, you know, a uh, higher protocol, because we're just not going to send, you know, for instance, um, 100 values 100 times per second on a 9600 baud serial port. It's just, we just won't work. We'll, be, we'll run out of data bandwidth. So good question. Thank you. Uh, Frank, I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, I don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that up to the software developers, but, uh, certainly some sort of networking protocol that, uh, just works. Right. Um, so, uh, okay, let's see. Francisco has the question, you know, what's the difference of the advantages you see for WITS 2.0 the way visualize compared to WITS ML with a local store at the rig site? Uh, Francisco, I mean, I may, may be mistaken, but the impression that I've gotten over time is that WitsML um, doesn't, wasn't really designed for real-time transfer, right? So um, I'm not aware that WitsML would support, you know, sending, you know, 10, 20, 100 points per second, you know, in real time, meaning as fast as they happen without any sort of delay. I think that if you have a database in between versus just broadcasting data on the network, that's going to kind of get in your way and slow you down. Um, and... Uh, so, I mean, if there's some sort of a, you know, I know WITSML was trying to address it. I don't know where they're at. They already might have a good idea for WITS 2.0. If they do, I would continue to encourage them to just keep going. I'm just not personally aware of it at this time, right? Um, Jim says, for 9,600 baud rate, if you multiple sources are trying to push one second data, would the data just get lost? It would get lost or it would get lagged behind and it would fall out of real time and get kind of buffered up. Um, and then see, Morales, uh, is NetWits enabled to be used? Yeah, you can download NetWits on the website. Just go to aerosmoder.com, go to our uh, free, uh, uh, free download section, and you can download NetWits right now and start playing with it, right? Um, uh, I don't have a NetWits demo set up right now, sorry. Um, what does real time mean to me? So real time to me means that, um, you know, the, 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 the drilling system that is operating right now is depending, depending on the data and that, it, and that the promise of that data is that it, that it is accurate, it is up to date in like less than one second or tenth of a second, um, and uh, it is going to be continuously streamed at a regular rate. That's what I would say real time means to me. So, for example, like uh, an automatic driller you know, uh, might depend on the EDR system to tell it, you know, some of the pressure parameters or whatever else that needs to be very, very up to date. Um, and then um, all the time. And then the NWD system, for instance, to the automatic driller, we need to send a tool face out as soon as it, uh, it, it comes across. Like I can't wait a second or two once I decode a tool face. I've got to get that to the automatic driller as fast as possible. And that's kind of what I mean uh, with real time, right? Um, Okay, and then going back to, okay, Paysetter says, can I give a little bit more overview of NetWits? Yeah, so NetWits, um, so NetWits is a program. You can, this is a little screenshot of the software up here. You can just install it on every PC that you would like to have it talk uh, on, on the network. Uh, it presents a virtual serial port, one virtual serial port that you can connect a legacy program into. Um, and so it, 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 pre it presents that virtual serial port so that it can work with uh, all existing WITS uh, software and not have to rewrite the WITS ports, et cetera. And then it, once it receives the WITS data, it will broadcast it out with a custom network protocol um, to everyone that, everyone that it can see on the network, you know, multitask, multi, multicast, et cetera. And the same thing, it'll, it'll send the data that it receives back out via that serial port, right? So, on, you know, for instance, you'd have like an NWD computer, an EDR computer. If you installed NetWits on both of them, you connect the EDR system to the virtual serial port that the first software presents. And then, um, uh, and then the NWD, NWD system does the same thing. And then they would communicate the other data over the network, right? Um, ask me, if that doesn't quite cover what you're looking for, Paysetter, let me know. Um, and then I guess Salman was saying, uh, yes, Salman, I think you can provide information back. Uh, Jim says, where do we find information on WID0 via TCP? Um, Jim, that's kind of a, a, an unofficial protocol that's not really supported somewhere. Um, but, you know, the TCP, since it's kind of a, 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 a protocol of, um, it's, it's, just, it's just a byte streaming protocol. It's just characters after characters. Um, very similar to serial that everyone just kind of like uses a, um, uh, 
uses it just like a serial port, right? So you open a TCP connection on a certain port, and then you just send the same data on the TCP connection, these same characters, the same way you would send it on the serial port, right? So it just kind of translates directly. Um, which, which TCP port is not like widespread, it's kind of sporadic here and there. Some people support it, some people don't. Uh, you can test it with the, with the simulator. So I mean, I guess the simulator can be considered a source of information. So if you want to write WITS over TCP code, then you can use a simulator to test that. But uh, the only systems that I know of that um, support uh, WITS over uh, TCP are like custom proprietary systems. I don't know that you could be guaranteed to go to the rig and just hook into somebody on WITS over TCP right now, right? Um, uh, can you write to WITS by using NetWITS? Yeah, you, you can write back to it, not just read. So any system can write. It keeps a global data table of all values. You know, whichever system wants to write to the, to the value can write to it. So you just have to watch out for two systems trying to write the same value. Otherwise, it stores that global table and then it will, uh, re, you know, re, uh, send that global table out to everybody for an update. So all nodes can write and all nodes can read, right? And does NITWIT store temporarily data in case there's a disconnection between my system and the generating system? Uh, yes, I believe so, but I, I will double check with our developers and see what would happen in that case. So, good question, good question, uh, Francisco. So, now the only the only caveat I'll, I will give you guys about NITWITs is like uh, when you when you when you try to run it on the on your in your office, it'll be fine. On the rig, um, we have to watch out for people who have really restricted networks and try to cut down on like TCP or UDP, UDP traffic. So just be aware that, you know, running NetWits on the rig is probably gonna in, involve a little bit of collaboration with the IT provider of whoever's network and um, uh, is um, uh, running on the rig, right? And make sure that they're not gonna block the, the ports or whatever else that we need in order to make that happen, so. All right, uh, any more questions before we wrap up for today? Okay. Um, I really appreciate all the questions and the interaction, uh, everyone, that was great. Uh, thank you for our webinar, this was a lot of fun. And uh, you know, uh, I'm, we're always very approachable. If you would like to ask more questions or talk with us, engage with us more, feel free to reach out. And uh, check us out on LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, hey, the podcast. Don't don't forget the podcast. If you um, if you have an iPhone, uh, go to the the podcast store or Android. Go to Spotify and just search for Edos Miller. We have a fantastic podcast that covers all sorts of stuff. And then uh, this 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 video will be available online sooner than later. So if um, any of your uh, colleagues you, know, you missed this and you really wanted them to see, uh, then we'll have that video for you guys to forward around internally, and they can catch up as well. So. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. It was a, it was a pleasure.